Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the DC Today. It is Thursday and I feel like I've been away for a little bit. I um, actually recorded on Monday of this week from Palm Beach. I had Brian filling in for me on Tuesday as I was speaking in Palm Beach and then Trevor on Wednesday as I was flying back. Uh, but it's just been a whirlwind of a week, and and there is so much that's going to be in Dividend Cafe tomorrow, Friday. I can't wait. Um, it's been an awful lot of work putting different things together, but I, I feel like I'm on the verge of pulling it together in the way I wanted, which is to take a lot of stuff from our meetings in New York City uh, and 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 kind of delivering to you guys a summary of key takeaways and things and and i'm i'm excited for it so that'll be in dividend cafe tomorrow but of course that leaves us with today and another wild ride in markets real quickly uh i'm gonna pull this up because i don't have my readers Ugh. the um dow was up 194 points but you got to remember that the dow had been up 550 points earlier in the day. So it actually gave up a lot of its intraday lead. It closed up 0.6%. But then the Dow giving up 350 points of a lead is only the second market story uh, as the NASDAQ was down 1.6%. It's been a very rough week for the NASDAQ. And it looks like tomorrow is going to be another rough day, as I'll explain in a moment. But um Having these days with such a high dispersion of results between the Dow and the NASDAQ or the Dow and the S&P, today the Dow was up 61 basis points. The S&P was down 61 basis points. I've talked about this before. It happens. It doesn't happen a lot, but we're in a little season here where it's been happening. And so you had a pretty substantial drop in NASDAQ and a pretty decent day to the upside in the Dow. Um, the 10 year treasury yield, by the way, was down 9%, uh, excuse me, nine basis points to 3.92. So a very big rally taking place in the 10 year treasury, uh, particularly uh, from, let's see here, October. What was the date that was the actual high? I thought I put that in there. I did not. Um, roughly a couple of weeks ago, the 10 year was at uh, 4. Two three percent. So you're now looking at 31 basis points of a drop in the 10 year. But then um, the more substantial marker was literally two weeks ago. The 10 year in UK was 4.5, and today it was at 3.5. So you have a hundred basis points of drop, a massive rally to the upside in UK bonds. I'll talk about that in a moment. Best performing sector today was industrials, up 1.14%. The bottom performing sector was communication services, was down over 4%. Huge amount of that attribution is to the company uh, formerly known as Facebook that was down 25% today. So that's the summary of markets. The last thing I'll mention is crude oil closed at $88.58. It was up 0.72%. So um, mixed bag, some really brutal results and some tech stuff, some pretty bad results and almost all tech stuff, some pretty good results in some parts of the um, more diversified economy, particularly rate sensitive sectors and the Dow overall doing fine, but giving up some lead. But remember, it's up, you know, a substantial amount here in the last couple of weeks. And the news front, I mentioned already the... Um, drop in Facebook. Uh, after hours, um, Apple released today, which is the largest uh, company in the United States. And I would point out too that uh, Amazon re announced, which is up there. Apple right now, as I'm recording, is only down a little over 1% after hours. It had been down 5%. Amazon is down 20%. So after hours trading is what it is. Things could be even worse tomorrow or better, you don't know. But it doesn't look like this pummeling of big tech is is ending. And with the results you've seen in, in Google, in, in Facebook, in Amazon, in, in Microsoft, and now in um, 
uh, we'll see how how bad Apple's is. There's a pretty consistent theme of not a, having had a great third quarter in big tech, and yet a pretty consistent theme in a lot of non tech sectors doing doing pretty well. So an interesting combination of events there. Credit Suisse, by the way, massive European uh, uh, financial behemoth, um, doing a huge restructuring, more or less, to try to save the deeply impaired company, trying to raise $4 billion of new capital and uh, planning to cut thousands of jobs. So want to share all the company-specific news. Macroeconomics, and then I'll get ready to wrap up. Real GDP grew in Q3 at 2.6% annualized. You recall we had had net contraction um, in both Q1 and Q2. The primary factor driving GDP growth in Q3 was net exports being higher. We're exporting more energy. We're importing less goods from China. So net exports, which is essentially exports minus imports, work to the favor of the GDP calculus. And yet the more sustainable elements like business investment, they were up in the quarter, but not by much. The consumption was up in the quarter, but not by much. So just as I didn't believe that the factors pushing GDP metric, I wrote a whole dividend cafe about this, down in Q1, Q2 were really clearly recessionary, despite many people's political impulse to want it to be. Um, I don't think that the nature of this economic print is all that positive either. It's again, right in this perfect land of ambiguity that the economy has been <clears throat> living in for some time. New orders for durable goods were up on the month 0.4%, uh, a little less than the 0.6% expected. Now, the European Central Bank, as expected, they hiked their deposit rate uh, by 75 basis points. That brought them up to 150. If it feels like they've done more than just two rate hikes to get to 150, it's because they started at a negative yield. And so some of their initial rates hikes were just getting them out of the negative zero land of uh, make-believe. And um, then I want to talk about the Fed real quickly. The expectations for a 75 basis rate hike in November, which the, the announcement will come next Wednesday, November 2nd, were 100% a few days ago. They're now down to 88%, with a 12% chance implied in futures pricing of 50 basis points. So 88 is pretty close to 100. I bring it up just to say that for some reason, some of that shine of a assured three-quarter point hike has come off. But then more interestingly is that in December, the odds of a second 75 basis point rate hike, they were at about 70%, and now they've come all the way down to 40%, a little less than 40, as a matter of fact. So the majority view is overwhelmingly for 75 in November and slightly majority for only 50 in December, which would equal 125 base points of rate hikes between now and the end of the year, which would bring the 300 uh, percent, uh, 300 basis point, a 3 percent Fed funds rate up to four and a quarter by the end of the year. Um, I don't know. That's the majority view in the market right now, and that's come down from where it was just a, a couple of weeks, not even a couple of weeks ago. So be that as it may, the real question going into 2023 will be what the terminal rate is. Um, I, I suspect that you are looking between 400 and 450. There's always a chance of it being a little higher, but I, I don't believe it will. But again, the part that will matter much more is whether or not they continue hiking or they pause and flatline at whatever that terminal rate uh, uh, of Fed funds may prove to be as we leave 2022. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Like I said, a special dividend cafe coming tomorrow and um, something I'm very excited about. But that covers today in the market. We'll see what the impact of um, Apple and Amazon's results are on the broad markets tomorrow. We'll see if this dispersion between Dow and NASDAQ continues. And hopefully uh, you'll find Dividend Cafe to be enticing and interesting. I know a lot's gone into it and there's so much to be chewing on right now in this very complex world we live in. Thanks for listening to and watching and reading the DC Today. <music>